What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. Today I have a beast monster deck for you guys. Yes, you heard me correctly, beast monsters. Typically, when you think of monsters, you think of giant big units or like a no unit type of monster deck. This is neither, it's, yeah. So the, the core of the deck is Phoenix, obviously. Um, in the past, Phoenix has been, well, bad. Uh, but they changed the word, uh, the way that graveyard works. So now, if you lock a phoenix and it goes into the graveyard, it comes back. Uh, lock no longer counters phoenix. Same goes for Sarah's. Um, so this is really, really good for phoenix, obviously. Um, the other hard counter would be Regis. Regis dooms it. Um, and bombs. Bombs can also doom. And muzzle. Muzzle is obviously very good. Uh, do note, if you muzzle your opponent's phoenix, you get four points of carryover because it will carry back over uh, when it does die uh, between rounds. Uh, Technically, Ardol is also a counter, and Wily is also a counter. Basically, anything that can steal the card or banish the card is going to counter it. Um, yeah, so this deck focuses on getting phoenixes, multiple phoenixes, uh, on the board in round 1 slash 2, and you can carry over between 1 to 3 phoenixes in round 2 and 3, and that's really, really strong carryover, as we know. It's very, very good, as we know from uh, Skaggs. Um, so this deck is very, very focused on Phoenix. Typically, this type of deck has been a meme in the past, but because Phoenixes don't disappear with locks, it's actually pretty viable. Uh, I wouldn't by any means say this is like a tier one deck, uh, but it is a very fun deck. Um, a lot of people um, who are watching said things along the lines like, this is a cool deck. It's cool. It's just, it's unique. It's not something we've really seen before other than maybe multi-Phoenix, which is in the past been a meme, but it works now because it doesn't get hard countered by locks. Um, yeah, so I'll go through the list pretty quickly. Uh, Phoenix obviously is kind of the core of the deck. You have Royal Decree in the deck because it adds consistency to the deck. Whatever gold card you don't find in round one slash two, uh, Royal Decree will help you find. I guess I should probably go over the combo. The main combo is Caranthir on Phoenix. Uh, Caranthir creates a copy of a unit, so if you create a copy of a phoenix, it counts as another phoenix. Uh, and then you have Whispering Hillock, which allows you to destroy an allied unit and spawn uh, a base copy. So the idea would be you play Caranthir on phoenix, you have a phoenix on the board, at, uh, one strength. Then you Whispering Hillock, the phoenix on the board, which destroys it and creates a new one. Uh, and then you play the actual phoenix from hand. So you have a total of three phoenixes on the board. Um, granted, this is, of course... If you draw all three of those cards um so usually i draw one to two of them um current theory, you kind of have to play before phoenix so if i don't have uh phoenix in hand and royal decree or access to current theory, uh, and i have to royal decree phoenix out current theory is just you're not going to be able to get three phoenixes getting two is pretty easy you just have to find the phoenix and then you have to play uh tribute slash whispering hillock on the phoenix between round ones and round two um yeah uh, I'll keep going through the list. Roach is obviously very good because it is a beast. I should also mention uh, Morvid is in this deck. Boost all beast units by one. So if you're playing a ton of beasts, which this deck plays a ton of beasts, uh, this boosts your entire board by plus one typically, which is usually anywhere between like five and ten units, which is pretty good. It's a good card in the deck. Uh, so Roach obviously works very well. It works for the thinning. This deck thins down to like seven or five, depending on if you play Summoning Circle. Um, so Roach is obviously very good for the deck. Uh, it's early tempo in round one, which is something that this deck can struggle with uh, because it is pretty slow on points, right? If you play Caranthir into Phoenix, you're playing a four, right? Uh, plus the Roach, seven. If you play Hillock, that's a, that's a three-point card because you're upgrading a Phoenix at one strength to four strength, which is really bad tempo. Uh, and then you're playing another Phoenix from hand, which is four points. That's really bad, right? You're, you're playing horrific tempo, but it doesn't matter because you get all the carryover. So you can lose on even in round one. It doesn't really matter because... If you lose uneven in round one and you played all three phoenixes, you have 12 carryover. Most, uh, that one card advantage isn't going to matter because 12 carryover is worth more than one card. So, yeah, this deck can afford to lose uneven in round one. Toad Prince, another beast. It's a nine for nine. Uh, helps you kill engine. It's a good card. Uh, Whispering... Uh, Wispus Tribute. Obviously, this is a good card because it can tutor our Hillock, which increases the consistency of the deck. Uh, if you do Brick on it, you do have Parasite as your second option. Uh, Whispering Hillock, as we mentioned earlier, is very good for Phoenix. Summoning Circle. Uh, this card is seeing stupid amounts of play. This card is it's it was good last patch. It's just as good this patch. Summoning Circle is one of the best cards in the game. Uh, 
I've seen this in so many different decks, decks that have no business running this card just because it's a really good card. Uh, any kind of deck that has any kind of combo loves this card. Um, to the point where I've started to play artifact removal in every deck. Uh, there's a reason. There's a Nithril in this deck. Uh, the original list that um, one of my viewers gave to me didn't have Nithril. It actually had um, Harpy Egg and Solana Harpy, which are both beasts. It, it works. I, I didn't love it because uh, sometimes they brick because one of them is kind of useless without the other. Uh, so I replaced it with a Slizzard and a Nithril. Uh, the Nithril is very important because every Arrakis Queen deck uh, runs artifacts. <laughs> they run Summoning Circle and Frightener. Um, so you, you, you kind of need artifact removal in this meta. If you're playing monsters, you should 100% auto-include Nithril. If you're playing Squirtle, you should be playing Ida. If you're playing Nilfgaard, you should probably be playing False Siri. Um, the other factions don't really have great artifact removal, but there's always the bomb that removes artifacts, and there's always Primordial Dao if you really, really want to. Uh, Morvid, we talked about earlier, is very good in a beast deck. Kranthir is very good with Phoenix. Um, Pumpkin, what do you do if you play your Phoenix before Kranthir and you brick your Kranthir? Well, it's not really bricked because you can play it with Alpha Werewolf. Uh, I've actually had up to three Alpha Werewolf uh, on the board at once. Um, because when you play Karanthir on a uh, werewolf with Thrive, it'll go to one and then get plus one, and then you have an immune werewolf. And immunity, as everybody knows, is super, super strong. So having another immune werewolf doesn't hurt, right? It'll go to four or five, six strength, depending on what you're playing that round. So that's typically my go-to uh, with Karanthir. You could play it on Werecat if you really wanted to. Um, the nice thing about Slizzard in the deck, this deck has no consumed targets. I literally play this card because it is a beast and it fills the five slot. That is it. You have the plus side of, well, every now and then you'll play in the same round with Werecat and you get to consume Werecat and you get that extra proc of one damage, which is nice. Um, so uh, yeah, keep that in mind. So Karanthir is typically used on Phoenix. If you don't have Phoenix or you already played it, uh, you play it on Werewolf or Werecat. I would highly advise Werewolf though. Uh, Striga. It's removal. It's good. Having removal is never bad. Where a cat, uh, it's another beast. It has the word Thrive on it, which is great. And yeah, it's like an AoE damage. It's, it's okay. It's not amazing, but it's a beast. Uh, Parasite, it's good removal. Um, and it's your second organic card in case you draw Hillock uh, naturally. Nithril, I mentioned earlier, is very good in this meta. Alpha Werewolf. Uh, it did get nerfed by 1P, but it's still really good because it has the word immunity on it. Um, so yeah, this card's still obviously very good. Slizzard, I mentioned earlier, doesn't really have much synergy with this deck other than it being a beast and it has like some synergy with Werecat. Um, best case scenario, you play it and your opponent like expends removal on it and you call it a day. Yeah. Wyvern, it's a beast. Uh, Wild Hunt Riders, it's thinning. Uh, I typically try to get these out as fast as possible. If I lose coin flip, my if I draw perfectly, I go like Cranther Phoenix into Hillock, in with like Naked Hillock or Wispus Tribute into Hillock, uh, into like Phoenix from hand, and then I'll TA something so I have Tall Yoon and then play Wild Hunt Rider. Do note after the changes, you cannot play Wild Hunt Rider on an empty board. I mean, you can, but it won't pull the other one out. You, you do need to have dominance. Uh, Werewolf. It's a beast and it's immune. It's great. Um, yeah, I typically play my woodland on it just because it's immune. It's big. Your opponent can't Geralt it. Yeah. Uh, I 95% of the time, I play woodland on werewolf. It's probably 100% of the time, but there's probably one game where I didn't. So, uh, yeah, immunity on werewolf. Wolf pack. Yes, wolf pack. It's crazy. I know. There are better bronzes uh, typically, but... It's a beast, and that's important. So, yeah, it's a beast. Uh, Cockatrice. This card sees no play outside of this deck. Um, this deck runs all beasts, so it typically finds the value, which is 6 for 4, which is really good. Um, and it has bonus synergy with Summoning Circle. So, typically, I save Summoning Circle for round 3. Uh, this is not a deck where you play Summoning Circle in round 1. Typically, this deck plays 3 to 4 cards in round 1 and then gets out. If you win Coin Flip, you can bleed, obviously, because you do have... Uh, like 4 to 12 points of carryover. Uh, but yeah, Cockatrice is really nice to pull out with Summoning Circle. You play it in between two beasts, you hit something for 4 damage, and then maybe you play a Wolf Pack from hand and you kill something. Uh, so you, you're able to dish out more damage than you normally would be able to with a combination of different cards. Uh, game plan. You don't have to win round 1. Hard, hard mulligan for Phoenix and the other two combo cards, which are Karanthir and uh, Tribute slash Hillock. Um, even if that means accidentally bricking riders, you, you, 
you have to find the core cards. Uh, this is a deck where if you do not draw Phoenix in round one or round two, you lose. It's game over. Uh, the odds of that happening are very slim because you are running Phoenix and you're running Royal Decree. Um, but yeah, hard mulligan. You, you, you need to find those cards. They're very important. Uh, this deck will lose if you do not find those two cards or at least Phoenix by round two. So uh, yeah, there, there are games where you will just lose the game. Um, and that's kind of unfortunate, but it is somewhat of a gimmicky deck, so it's understandable. Um, so yeah, try to get your Phoenix combo out in round one. Round two, you're up 12 points. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard for your opponents to bleed. Don't flip them in round two uh, until your opponent has passed, obviously, because uh, if you flip them, your opponent can damage them. If they're unflipped and they're in uh, artifact form, uh, your opponent can damage them. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then round three, same thing. Don't flip them. Uh, do, do make sure to flip them in round two, though. If you don't flip them in round two uh, after your opponent passes, uh, they won't carry over into round three. So once they get to round three, uh, don't flip them. Wait till the very end of the game, uh, right before you play Morvid. Flip them and then play Morvid and bam, you win. GG. Uh, yeah, it's a fun deck. Uh, if you have the cards or you have extra scrap lying around, I highly suggest you try it because it is kind of an interesting take on monsters. Um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy the deck and the gameplay, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Why not Jermaine? Way too expensive. Too expensive. Dopplers? Yeah, Dopplers are a consideration, but I don't really have the P for them. This deck is, I, I mentioned earlier, this deck is super tight on provisions. I don't really have provisions to willy-nilly throw around. It's really good. Oh. Dream hand. We basically just completely ignore what he does and we go face. This deck looks fun. Yeah, it's a really fun deck. I highly suggest trying this deck. <laughs> Pathetic. You have Regis? Yes. <laughs> eh. How scared am I of this? So this deck can actually lose on even and do fine, because that's 12 carryover. And 12 carryover is pretty nifty. This is a really good opener. Jeez. No TA? No, we wait on TA because we want to thin the riders out. I mean, we could go a card deeper, but the card deeper would be a werewolf. I guess that's okay. The shorter the round two is, the better, actually. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. We had a werewolf for this. Trade up one P. Why not Nithril? You want me to Nithril a portal? I don't know. Some of these decks run, um,. It could be like the Summoning Circle deck. I don't know. I'm so scared of playing Nithril. I just save it for round three because Summoning Circle is such a disgustingly good card. I'm honestly surprised it didn't nerf Summoning Circle. I'm very, very surprised it did not nerf Summoning Circle. Very, very surprised. It's actually a good hand. If he dry passes, we have the Wyvern to play. This is good. This is good. It's fine. It's good. It's good. Yeah, okay. Circle's bad, but every time I mulligan Circle, I never draw it again, so... And beauty. Beautiful. Destiny is unswerving. Cheated. It will not oh. be. Oh. Gasmic. Oh, he's going. He's going for the 2 0. Alright, I respect it.
The key is to never play any units or they can never hit your cards. Oh, shit. I need to kill this. I'm so trigger happy. Holy shit. We lose now, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Nice snare throw. Shh, chat, be quiet. Hush. Hush. Shh, 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 shh. Shh. Don't be mean. What do we want to play? Do we want to play an eight? Or an eight? I don't know. We should probably save this for, or we should probably save this for round three. Dealing five damage is pretty good. Always Striga? I think you're wrong. Removal is pretty important. So. We're going to draw three cards here. This is worth three plus three is six plus five. Is, this is worth 11. This is only worth eight. But if it kills an engine, it's worth more than that. Right? And if we kill something like Aquas, it's the difference between winning and losing the game. So being able to kill Aquas seems pretty important. I, th I think so. We'll see. Maybe, maybe that's incorrect, but being able to kill an engine just seems pretty good. It's good. Oh, Slizzard Finisher, Pog, you. And I think so. Need to play around uh, Epidemic and not turn on my roll. McDominance. Okay. Does he actually not have any engines? Shit. Well, he, he had the Aquas, but he gave two Nausicaa sergeants for him. Yeah, 
man. It's a good thing we, uh... Alright, it's Regis or Bust. Easy. Easy game. Okay. Yeah, hide and seek, yeah. Dominion hide and seek was so much fun. Oh. I never liked seeking, but hiding was... Oh, so much fun. You just blow 40 minutes away just dicking around. But it was a fun 40 minutes. I honestly wish this still existed. Didn't they delete Dominion? Like, that that was the only good thing about Dominion. Holy shit, this hand is amazing. Does, does Dominion still exist? That would actually be a good enough reason for me to download League. Play Dominion, no joke. They deleted it four years ago? Yeah, it was the only good thing about League. After all the changes. What if you what do you do if you don't get Phoenix in opening hand? Well that's why you run Royal Decree. Um, but if you don't, then you hope they don't 2-0 you. Alright, and that's the weakness of this deck. If you don't draw Phoenix in round 1, or draw Royal Decree in round 1, after 2-3 to three mulligans, you're in a bad spot. But that's just how the cookie crumbles. Saying. Dominion was fast and fun? No, like, the regular mode was kind of boring after a while. I'm talking about the customs. The customs were where it was at. Like, you can play Hide and Seek on Summoner's Rift with, like, Teemo, but it's just not the same. I'd be your best and last. Now Overwatch has customs? Yeah, I saw the, uh... It was like an Anna, a custom Anna game where... They have uh, these like green pads on the ground where if you jump on them, you like bounce up. Similar to like Octane's bouncy pad thingy. Which looks pretty cool. You practice. I mean, most people who do it just practice their Anna skills. They're on Carol. No reason not to. How do you counter this deck? Uh, points? I don't know. So like, Soldier Nilfgaard shits on this deck. The Soldier Nilfgaard is really, really strong in a long round three. Um, basically a deck that outpoints, that plays a lot of points. So like a control deck is going to lose to this unless you're playing bombs. The easiest way to counter this deck is play bombs. You play bombs, you win. GG. That's it. Nothing I can do against bombs. Bombs blow you up. I mean, I can go a card deeper. It doesn't hurt. I could play the Werecat, but Werecat, I feel like, is going to be very good in this matchup towards the end. I guess I could get away with a Werewolf. I mean, normally you pass, but... The sh I could actually get 2 would by AQ, and that's kind of scary. AQ has enough points to go for a 2-0, so we need to bleed a little bit. Just so that the round next turn is shorter, so that 12 points of carryover is more impactful. That's the idea, at least. Isn't lock working? Yeah, locks doesn't work on uh, Phoenix anymore. Locking a Phoenix into Graveyard doesn't do anything. It still carries over into the next round. Locks don't go into Graveyard. Or, like, locks don't stick in Graveyard. So, the biggest issue with Phoenix were locks and Regis, but Regis got hard nerfed, and locks don't work anymore, so... Phoenixes are actually pretty decent. Same with Sarah's, yeah. The banishes only counter, yep. Or muzzle. Uh, Ardol slash muzzle is good against it because you can steal it. Good thing I have death roll, cap. 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 Alright, maybe pass. It's too many points. Because this is five invisible points and this is 12. That's 17 invisible points plus fog is ticking. Ardol versus deck. I actually queued into Ardol with this deck and we won by a landslide, so this deck can actually still beat Ardol, which is really funny. 
song name, uh, Bob the Builder. Can he fix it? Uh, wait, do you want this song or the last song? This song is this. The last song was this. All right, we're looking for Nithril. Yay! NR Engines destroys this deck. We just beat NR Engines. It doesn't destroy this deck because you just don't flip over the carryover. Right? You just sit on the you just sit on the artifacts until they pass and then you take it. GG. No, it's not over yet. AQ has a lot of points in round three. AQ can pull this off potentially. Play Dandelion? Poet? Poet's not very good. Brand destroys? Oh yeah, because of uh D bomb, but nobody plays Brand anymore, so I'm not really worried about that. Pumpkin is banished the only way to remove Phoenix permanently, yeah. Or muzzle slash uh so Muzzle's the, the hardest counter in the game because not only do you deny from them, but you get the carryover because the lock doesn't matter. If you muzzle a Phoenix, you get four points to carry over, which is, you know, pretty good. Uh, so yeah, Muzzle is the hardest counter in the game uh, right behind Banish with either, I guess Wily technically counts. So Muzzle, Regis, Wily, Ardol, those are all hard bombs or hard counters. Um, I guess I want this card, so we should be looking for Royal. Uh, this is a four point dud. It's actually not, because we have Wear Cat. That's good for later. All right, so we can pull out. Two fives. So this is one plus nine, so it's 10 ticks. We can pull this out. It's just really slow. But I mean, it's the same thing as pulling out like, I guess wyverns are slightly better. Yeah, two wyverns is better because this deck doesn't have removal. So the immunity doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay, so we'll go double wyvern. Sure. I don't give a shit about this. Six damage. Six damage is useless. I don't want to play this because I want to TA it. I could play Slizzard. I was going to save Slizzard for Werecat, but... Yeah, it's not happening. White Frost counters the stack. Yeah, White Frost, like, hard, hard, hard counters the stack. But nobody plays White Frost, so it's fine. Stop playing unitless decks. Really? You're gonna give me shit for this deck? It's a beast deck. We, 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 we play the non-units, we play one non-unit. We play Summoning Circle, it's the only non-unit in my deck. Also, he's playing no unit too, so it's fine. Parasite? Okay, Yo, okay, fine chat. Sure, Parasite and Royal Decree. Why don't people play Bran? Because Coral got nerfed. And Bran got nerfed. Ooh. All right, now we play, what's that card that does the thing that eats the little shit? Uh, nom nom nom, I don't know what it's called. Uh, Predatory Dive, there we go. Yeah, all right. I love the song, but why are we listening to it on loop? Ask YouTube. Actually, somebody requested this song. Ooh, 
nice. That's actually pretty decent. Does he actually not have summoning circle? I guess he doesn't have it. Does he actually not have circle? I mean, he can wait two more turns. I don't think he would wait this long. Like the only reason you would wait this long is if you knew that I had Nithril, and if you knew I had Nithril, you would have used the Ale Charges. Unless you're looking for Ale Charges, unless you're looking for the the bait. I don't know. It's kind of suspicious, but whatever. It's not a snipe. I mean, it's not a snipe if this deck typically runs in a throw, but this deck doesn't run in a throw. Eat the Striga? Why? Oh, to play around Glusty? No, because this will boost it to two. There's no point. You would do the same thing? Well, I mean, if you play it earlier, if you play if you play Circle on turn one, you get two units instead of one unit, and two is better than one. He didn't play around my Ida. Oh, okay. So are we confirming that he's sniping? I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I don't care. You crossed the wrong sorceress. I actually think we win this. Oh, Griffin? Forktail? Oh, 
Dude, hit this car. Oh my. Seriously? It's so sad that I killed all of these things.